summer is coming. Are you excited? Are you nervous? Are you maybe not exactly feeling summer ready, as some might say? I have a plan for you that can help. Step by step, week by week. I'm not gonna tell you how to drop 20 pounds in two months. I'm also not gonna tell you just to love yourself because like we know it's just not that easy. But I do believe the better you treat yourself, the better you'll feel inside and out, the more confident you'll be. And that radiates. In the end, you are gonna look incredible. Your daily habits really do shape you. And if they're making you feel incredible, no matter what your physical body looks like, you're just gonna glow. You're gonna feel amazing and you're gonna have the best summer. Just make sure you're doing these things out of love for yourself and not fear or hatred. You can't hate yourself into feeling good or looking good. But let's get into it. Week one. Week one, the first step, it's time to refocus and prioritize your workouts. Do you have a workout routine? Have you been sticking to a workout routine? Was this a new year's resolution that you fell off of? You gotta focus and prioritize your workouts. It's super important that you aim for what is realistic to you. You do not need to be in the gym six days a week. If you want to, if that provides you with, you know, routine and sanity, by all means do it. But also remember to plan your workouts into your current schedule. Do not plan your schedule around your workouts because if you make it fit into your schedule, into stuff you already do, you're so much less likely to skip it. Week one, refocusing, prioritizing, jumping back on your consistency with your workouts, your workout plan, whatever. I think it's just really super great timing because if you're wanting to, you know, get ready for summer and you're in the headspace of, okay, I'm gonna work on myself, whatever, you're gonna be the most motivated right in the beginning, right? So it'll be the easiest to take advantage of that motivation and kind of jump into your workouts. As time goes on, you might be a little less motivated, so I think it's really important to start with the exercise. And exercise is so important, whether you have crazy physique goals or not. If you need a little direction, I personally love the Alive app. I love the Mind Pump guys. I listen to their podcast all the time. They have so many different programs to choose from. It's really important to follow a program. You don't have to, but if you're thinking about it, I definitely recommend it because not only does it help with consistency, at least for me, <laughs> but it also also helps with results. That being said, I really like to listen to so many different like wellness and fitness podcasts. I really love, as I was saying, Mind Pump. I listen to them like literally every single day. I also love the pursuit of wellness. For me, it just really helps put me in the right headspace. Like always be thinking about these things, always be like learning and just hearing different perspectives. I really love it. And it just keeps my head in the game. I feel like it's the best way to describe it. I also really believe your workouts should be something you enjoy. You know, exercise doesn't have to be something you hate. And I feel like so many people are like, oh, like working out, like, oh, I have to do it, but I hate it. And it's like, no, like take this as an opportunity to try to change your relationship. Like find something you really like. I used to be mainly cardio, 12 through 30, walking as much as I love walking and believe it's so good for you mentally, physically. It's an activity I like actually enjoyed. But the past few months, I've really been into the weights and I just truly enjoy it. And it, my relationship with the gym just keeps evolving, but in such a good way. So you don't have to do two hours of cardio. I mean, you also don't have to go deadlift every day. You can go on hikes, you can do something, but it is important to get yourself moving. You know, and if it is being more routine based, following a program, going to the gym within your schedule at whatever time, whatever day, maybe you do have to do that. And there really are so many different options of movement that you can pick from. And if you don't know, and right now you think you hate everything, I bet there's something you haven't tried. People are so into Pilates these days. I, as much as I really wanna try it, and I haven't ever been to a like reformer studio or anything, I think it would be fun, but I don't know until I try. Also, three days of strength training goes way, way farther than you think. Again, you don't have to go to the gym six days a week to see results. But the really important part here and the point that I'm trying to make is that working out and exercise should make you feel good mentally and physically. And by reprioritizing this, refocusing on this, you're gonna start feeling good. This is week one. There are eight weeks total here. If you start your consistency game right now and keep it up, you are simply gonna be feeling so, so, so incredible by week eight throughout the summer. And if you feel good on the inside, well, you're gonna be more confident and you're simply just gonna look better. Not only because you're working out, but also because if you're feeling good, like you automatically just radiate. You glow differently. It's all about kind of working from the inside out. And so week one, it's all about the exercise. Get consistent, find what works for you, make a plan, fit it into your routine, really focus on the exercise and what is gonna do you best mentally and physically. And that's just your goal of week one. After week one, of course, you're gonna continue being consistent, doing your best and carrying each of these steps through but week two step two is where we introduce paying attention and working on your sleep sleep matters so much 
People have literally lost weight due to improving their sleep and nothing else. Not that everyone is out there or watching this video because they're trying to lose weight, but that's just a point I want to make. Sleep is where your muscles grow. It helps balance your hunger hormones and helps you make good decisions throughout the day. Helps reduce your cravings. Obviously gives you energy. You know, a good night of sleep, you're going to have more energy the next day. I've been loving using my aura ring to keep an eye on my sleep. Getting good sleep is not easy for everyone, right? Maybe you have a tough schedule. Maybe you have kids. But you do have to start prioritizing your sleep and even establishing a nighttime routine. You know, stop eating and drinking too late. Turn off your electronics more than a minute before you go to bed. Don't scroll on your phone too late. Chances are there is something you can do to at least improve your sleep habits. Great sleep will really affect other areas positively as well, like better eating habits, better working out habits, better energy. And I don't have this extravagant nighttime routine, but there are some things that I do to try to wind down at night. And it's so common to be really structured in the mornings, but I think having a nighttime routine can really benefit you. It can help you fall asleep quicker and get better quality of sleep. I've heard the 3 2, 1 method from Mind Pump. Essentially, it's stopping all food consumption three hours before you go to bed, stop drinking two hours before you go to bed, and stop all electronics and blue light one hour before you go to bed. They've said this is really boosted quality of sleep. It sounds cool and like something to try out, but prioritizing your sleep will really benefit just so much. And just taking the time, a few minutes to wind down, get in the zone, and try to make your bed just for sleeping. You know, not for electronics, but for just true good quality sleep. Do what you can to prioritize it. It can make the world of a difference. We're going to continue working on both our exercise and our sleep, but week three is where we introduce the next step, which is prioritizing your protein intake. All the fitness gurus say protein is king, but that's because it actually is. They are onto something. Not only can it help decrease body fat, but it feeds your muscles. It helps you build lean muscle mass. Increase Decreasing muscle, decreasing body fat, what an amazing thing. If we're talking aesthetics, this sounds like a road to an amazing physique. I always start off every single day with protein coffee, which gets me so ahead in my protein goals right in the morning, which I love. I'll do one cup high protein milk, which is 13 grams, a scoop of protein powder, which is 20 to 25 grams, depending on the flavor. Add espresso over top, mix it all together. And there you have a protein latte. Starting your day with 30 to 35 grams of protein. Crazy. I normally use caramel latte flavor because it just makes the most sense and complements the coffee the best. But it makes a huge difference in my day. Starts me so ahead. Helps me just get my day started. And if you don't have a Nespresso or espresso machine, you don't have to make it into a latte. You can literally take plain black coffee and add a scoop of caramel latte in it mix it together add a little milk if you feel like you need it and it's the perfect replacement for a coffee creamer but also being strong is just healthy having muscle being able to do things not getting burnt out as easily or as quick it'll just help you live day to day happier and help you enjoy your summer or literally any other time of the year. Protein is super filling. It's the most like satiating part of a meal and it's really great that you can kind of sneak it into little things like that's why I add the cottage cheese to the eggs not only does it make it fluffy but it's just another way to get like a little extra you know a little extra here and there wherever you can fit it and put it goes a long way it's good to fill you up also something I've learned from mind pump which if you try it you'll find it to be very true but prioritizing protein the golden rule kind of that a lot of people follow is one gram of protein per one pound of ideal body weight so if you for example want to weigh 100 pounds eating 100 grams of protein in a day. That's just easy numbers to put it in perspective, right? However, if you try your best to get your protein from whole food sources and not just like scoop after scoop of protein powder and shakes and bars, you'll probably naturally eat less calories and with that less carbs and fats. Yes, you need carbs and fats. I'm not saying it's good to like cut them all out or whatever. However, say right now, like you don't think about what you're eating at all. There's a good chance you could be overdoing it in the carbs, in the fats, and not enough in the protein. And since protein is the most satiating, if you kind of prioritize that, eat it first. If you don't finish your meal, you know, what's going to be left? Well, it's going to be the fats. It's going to be the carbs. And protein is really great in terms of calories as well. So naturally, it'll kind of bring those numbers down. And if you're aiming for a calorie deficit, 
the math is mathing. <laughs> like it all just kind of works out. This breakfast sandwich has about 24 grams of protein total. Not mind blowing, like it's not like it's 30 or 40, but I feel like that's a good amount and it was made at home. Great ingredients and I'm excited about it. <laughs> the cottage cheese added an extra like about three, but still just in one sandwich, like an extra three grams, that makes a difference. Yum. A good tip is when putting meals together, add your protein first. So for example, I have ingredients over here because I'm doing a burrito bowl for dinner and I'm gonna add the meat first. A lot of times I actually do like to measure it and that's not on a restriction basis or anything like that at all. It's simply so that I can make sure I'm eating enough because I feel like I don't really have the eye to gauge how much meat is truly a serving and I don't wanna under eat it because protein is so important. And just by adding it first, like, I feel like you'll add a good amount instead of adding it later on and then filling it with a lot of filler foods that provide you with less nutrients. And you do not have to track, you don't have to measure anything like that, I'm not telling you to do so. And again, mine isn't even on a restriction basis, but simply by the order that you assemble your food, it could make a difference. All depends on your habits, but it's something to maybe try and consider. And even if three ounces may be like a standard serving size for a protein, if you're running low at the end of the day, just up it, you know? I'll just add more meat in my burrito bowl or whatever you're eating. You know, double the protein or just add more than usual to try to hit that goal if you lack throughout the day. It's all about your priorities or sneaking in protein where you can. Of course, there are bars and whatever if you need help and I definitely take advantage of those, but eating as much as you can through whole natural foods is the best way to do it. I personally find that eating protein rich meals helps me with bloating, like protein I feel like is the last thing that makes me blow. It helps me just feel overall better. And when you do have more muscle mass on your body, your body burns more calories at rest and you'll probably have a better metabolism with more muscle mass and be able to eat more. And summer is so fun for like cookouts and like fun summer treats and I don't know, it's just, it's just a perk. Again, we're carrying the steps from weeks one, two, and three onward, but then into week four, let's introduce a step goal. If you don't already have a step goal, this is another thing that's really great. You know, maybe you like to do strength training for your typical gym sessions, but outside of that, well, most of your calories burned in a day are just from other daily tasks and daily movement, it's really awesome if you have a step goal. Just keep your body moving because your movement shouldn't only be from the gym, right? I do love to go on walks. It always just makes me feel good mentally, physically, but I also love how my aura ring adjusts my step goal for the day depending on like my sleep and how ready I am for the day, things like that, so that if I've had a rough night of sleep or I'm not feeling the best or something, I don't feel like I have to push myself. You know, like movement is good, Step goals are great, but also don't think you have to walk 20,000 steps a day every day, you know? Especially if you're a woman with a cycle, maybe sometimes cutting back on the steps is okay. You know, rest and recovery is important, right? Some days you might not need to move as much as others, but having a step goal is really awesome to try to keep you on track and keep you moving because it's so good in general. Make it a goal to move once every hour, especially if you work in an office or at a desk and you're sitting a lot. Maybe if you can, you know, like meetings permitted, every hour on the hour, just get up, walk a lap around the office, have your legs move, whatever, go back and sit back down. Or if you can, after every meal, take a 10 minute walk, helps with digestion, helps with bloating, but at the end of the day, that's another 30 minutes of walking added to your day that you wouldn't have before if you didn't make that a goal. In 10 minutes at a time, that's very doable. And that seems very, very small, but will add up in the end. Taking the stairs, parking far away, things like that. It's really awesome to just add steps into your day. Standing desks are awesome. Walking pads are awesome. I do like how fitness trackers will send you an alert if you haven't moved within the past hour. You know, just a reminder to like get up and go do something, take a quick stroll. It's good for your body. Week five, step five, we are focusing on staying consistent. We're working hard with our workouts. We are prioritizing sleep, prioritizing protein, getting in daily steps. Week five, we're just chilling. We are working on these things, doing what we can do to keep these habits up and going. Consistency, honestly, is key in what matters most, but oftentimes, can be the hardest thing. Check yourself. Are you being consistent? Keep it up if you are. Week six, this might sound kind of silly, but step six, okay, we're keeping everything from previous. Step six, we are rewarding ourselves and also kind of doing a little bit different 
type of work, we're buying a swimsuit. Specifically, a swimsuit that is flattering on you. So many of us, myself included, have a nightmare of a swimsuit drawer. I like to think of it the same as my underwear drawer, where I have so many pairs, yet I only want to wear the same few. Well, it's because some feel and look better than others, right? But your job is to find what is flattering on your body so that you do feel confident. It's important. We all have different shapes and sizes and features and looks on our bodies and different swimwear is going to fit us differently. It is so important that you feel confident in your swimsuit, regardless of how you look, right? Like this video isn't to say like, hey, let's drop 20 pounds before the summer. It's just to practice good habits so that you feel good inside, but I want you to also be happy with how you look, right? Like there is an aspect to this video that is like, okay, you do have to love yourself. At the end of the day, like you gotta work on your relationship with your body, but knowing what you do feel good in is important, at least I think. I know the shapes and cuts and even the colors that I prefer to wear, so that's what I buy. And it's so common that we feel more confident like in our underwear versus our swimsuit, which is such a silly thing because they can look <laughs> almost the same depending on what you go for. But I do think the swimsuit industry has come a very, very long way and there are so many sites online and you just gotta do your research and really find something that flatters you and that you like because I want you to be confident. You're gonna be feeling so good inside already by keeping up with these habits. You also gotta, you know, wear what you love, flaunt it, own it, and get something that just flatters you. You know, you'll feel, you'll feel amazing. Remember that clothing is made to fit you. You are not supposed to try to fit into a specific clothing. It's not your job to shrink down into something. It is that something's job to hug you right and show you off. And on to week seven, step seven, we are reflecting. How are these habits truly making you feel? Do you like your routines? Do you like your schedules? Do you feel different? Do you look different? And you might not look different at all, but maybe, maybe you will. Are your energy levels great? Are your moods better? Are your eating habits good? Do you feel happier? If you stuck to it this far, like go you, that is amazing, that is incredible. So many people don't. I just truly feel that the better I treat myself, the better I feel inside and out. Then the more confident I am, and just the better everything is. <laughs> Take time to journal, to reflect. You know, is there something that you're trying to do that's not working for you? Maybe you need to change it. It all starts with what you do each day. It doesn't start with how you look, but how you feel on the inside can reflect on how you do look on the outside. But also remember how you feel over how you look any day. Week eight is really just time to build yourself up. Give yourself credit. You've come so far. Eight weeks can feel really short. It can feel really long. And when you're introducing new things, it is very difficult in the beginning. But if you've made it all the way to the end in just two short months, you can feel like a totally different person. Hopefully it's starting to get warm out. It's time to start putting your swimsuit on, being confident. And if you're not, you got to practice faking it till you make it, as some would say. <laughs> a lot of confidence is just acting like you are confident, even if you don't feel like it. Like, just pretend you are, and then everyone's gonna think you are. Like, nobody really knows how you're feeling. Just what you're portraying to them. And if you're feeling great, you're probably looking great, right? But at the end of the day, you gotta remember that everyone is so concerned about themselves that no one's really looking at you. And that's so much easier said than done, but it's true. It's true at the gym, it's true at the beach, it's true in so many scenarios. Everyone is so selfish in good ways and in bad ways, whatever, but everyone is so concerned about how they look and, and themselves that you're an afterthought to them in the best way. And your body is much more than just fat and muscle dispersed. It's more than cellulite, uneven skin, or, or whatever you're concerned about. It allows you to do so much. It's gonna take you through an incredible summer. Don't let what it looks like control you. You only have so many summers on earth and life is meant to be enjoyed. Summer is meant to be enjoyed. There's so many fun things that go on in the summer that are so much bigger than worrying about the cellulite on the back of your thighs. And I don't want you to let that insecurity for example, ruin a super fun event with family, with friends, etc. There's just this certain freedom about summer and it should be appreciated. And as much as I love to work out and feel amazing and be on top of my game, I really do love a good margarita, especially a frozen margarita on the beach in the summertime, right? Like over time, you'll find your balance, but remember to live, be in the present, stop worrying about everything, especially how you look. And you should already be feeling so much better if you've taken these steps the past eight weeks. Have the best summer and just remember to live and enjoy it because you are so much more than your body. I love you. Thank you so much for watching. Have the best summer. Please subscribe if you've not and I'll see you in my next one.